What's up everybody? Pomage Bog. I'm the Duke of Johannesburg and welcome to my channel. So basically the video that is going to follow is a video that I already recorded um, quite some time back. I recorded it on my Nikon camera while I'm doing the little intro here on my uh, phone camera because why not? Um, basically in the following video I'm going to discuss my own personal top 10 uh, Orthodox Christian films. Keeping in mind that um, unlike our Orthodox Christian faith, which is completely, completely objective, um, the films that I've placed in this list and the order in which I placed them in is completely subjective based upon pretty much how much I enjoyed the film uh, versus how much I believe that they embodied our Orthodox Phronima. Now, before I start with the video, I'm going to do a quick little preamble, um, sort of outlining the difference between films within the um, Orthodox Christian category and the typical uh, Christian films that one might have been exposed to within the Protestant world. So, basically, the average Protestant film follows the very sort of spoon-fed sophomoric plotline of, well, bad guy atheist doesn't believe in God, point of contention with um, the protagonist, Deus Ex Machina happens, and uh, presto changeo, the atheist now believes in God and becomes a good person, which I believe is a little bit of a, uh, you know, moral fallacy or conflation of uh, sorts. Um, or they also might follow the probably equally sophomoric uh, plot line of, well, faithful churchgoer has something bad happen to them. Uh, point of contention, they begin to question their faith, and uh, Deus Ex Machina occurs again towards the end of the film, and a uh, good thing happens, and they now no longer question their faith, and everybody lives happily ever after. Um, <clears throat> basically, um, always it seems that the point of these films is to convert um, the atheist watching the movie, which uh, seems to be quite peculiar, since I don't think that any atheists will be watching those type of films to begin with. On the other hand, within the orthodox category of films, um, there's a lot more nuance. So basically, instead of trying to preach to the atheist supposedly watching the film, um, these films more seek to reaffirm and uh, validate the faith of the person watching the film. Uh, which is actually quite interesting because of the lack of being spoon-fed and the lack of, lack of insult to the intelligence of the watcher, um, one can actually play most of these films for somebody that is outside of the faith and um, perhaps even outside of faith itself. And um, yeah, I find that a very, uh, very good thing considering that one actually can introduce uh, one's family and friends and people that are outside of the faith to uh, orthodoxy via watching uh, any one of these excellent, excellent movies. So without any further ado, uh, let's begin that list. Kaide da Pochnemo, let's begin. <laughs> Movie number 10, a movie entitled The Lost One. It's a Russian film, short film, uh, basically what I would describe as a dark psychological thriller in which the main character, his wife and small son, lose their way and become stuck on a desert road. And as a result, they have to end up spending the night in their car. The following morning, the main character awakens alone with his wife and son having have mysteriously disappeared. And upon his searches for them, he stumbles across a small and uh, lonely country house in which an old man and a young attractive woman live. It seems that these very strange tenants um, seem to know about him and know about his family, but are trying to hide their knowledge. So basically, without giving away too much of the plot or any spoilers, um, I will say that it's a very dark film. 
as I mentioned before. Uh, certainly not overtly Christian, um, but it all definitely comes together in the end. So, as I mentioned, certainly very different from any of the Protestant forms that you may or may not have seen, and definitely quite different from any of the other forms on this list. Um, hence it coming in at number 10, but definitely an excellent form and well worth the watch. Form number 9, St. Cyril and Methodius, Apostles to the Slavs. So basically, the synopsis is pretty much in the title, but I will provide a brief overlay. Um, I believe that it's a Czech form, and um, as the title suggests, it follows the lives of St. Cyril and Methodius, two Eastern Roman brothers born in the 9th century um, and following the request of Moravian Prince Rostislav that Christian teachers be sent to the territory of Great Moravia and um, talking about how they became missionaries of Christianity and influenced the cultural fabric and development of the Great Moravian territory. Pretty much, um, you know, inventing the Galgalitic alphabet and the Cyrillic script, as I've actually spoken about in a previous video, as well as um, showing the opposition that they faced primarily from the papacy itself. It's a very long movie, very grounded in historical accuracy, and um, it does actually apparently have an accompanying docudrama series that I actually haven't seen. Um, definitely a great historical film, so far as being both loyal to historic accounts and well acted, um, good casting, and managing to keep the viewer interested throughout the whole um, throughout the whole film. So definitely a must see for anybody even vaguely interested in church history. Film number eight, Angel's Isle. Angel's Isle is a brilliant and heart wrenching Russian film taking place in the early days of the USSR and the events following the Bolshevik Revolution and the death of Vladimir Lenin. Um, and takes place in the year 1924 and uh, basically a, a commissar from the Soviet Union, having have already proved himself loyal to the Bolshevik cause by murdering a priest, is sent. Um, to infiltrate a monastery in Karelia under Finnish control at the time, um, trying to kill a Finnish general, in which he poses as a novice interested in monasticism and comes into a moral dilemma um, during his time in the monastery, which causes him to question his loyalties and his actions, leading of course to a moral crisis. Uh, the movie definitely quite accurately depicts the cruelty and the godlessness of the Bolsheviks and the uh, underlying conscience, human nature and call to repentance that lies deep within the hearts of all men and all people indeed. Uh, certainly a brilliant movie, well worth the watch and one that will give the viewer much to reflect upon. Film number seven, Confessions of a Samurai, also known as The Honored Priest. Another Russian film, filmed partly in Japan. This uh, movie is an action drama that follows the journey of an Orthodox priest named Father Nikolai, uh, who just so happens to be the brother of a Japanese Yakuza boss. He's uh, against his own will, drawn into a mob war in Japan, and escapes to the small rural village in Russia, where the movie uh, takes place for the most part. And uh, through much difficulty and many challenges that arise, he manages to improve the lives and relations of the village natives, as well as running afoul of the local corrupt landowner, while also trying to restore the local Orthodox Church, as well as parish life among the villagers. So it's not only incredibly different to other Christian films within the broader genre, but definitely, I would say, sets itself apart from even the other forms on this list in the sense that it is also a high budget action film featuring professional martial artists and stunt actors and um, actually the main actor himself being a Japanese man who converted to Orthodox Christianity and took up residence in Russia. So sort of like Steve Siegel except Orthodox and really Japanese and really a martial artist. Um, and uh, through all of this, it definitely maintains very much an orthodox phronema. And I would definitely recommend this film to everybody, 
but especially to younger viewers or people that are not so inclined to long and heavy dramas which most Russian Orthodox films consist of. And as I'm sure you've gathered, most of the films on this list are in fact made in Russia. Film number six, or should I say films number six, um, going by the title of Proverbs part one and two, another Russian film or films, um, as most of the films on this list are, um, these two part collections of short films are actually available on YouTube, along with actually a lot of the films on this list as well, um, and consist of um, basically segment by segment stories exploring the lives and lessons learned within a uh, Russian monastery that also doubles up as a village parish. Diving into the lives of the monks, the resident abbot, and the villagers, with elements of comedy um, being very much not in short supply. So this collection of short and uh, quite funny and touching films is both hilarious and light-hearted, as well as also being very heartwarming and um, truly embodying the orthodox mindset and the spirit of orthodox Christianity with lovable characters and great stories and is something that I would definitely recommend to all potential viewers of all ages and all walks of life since I believe there is a lesson within all of these little stories for all of us. Film number five, The Golden Horde. Another Russian film, also somewhat of an action drama, but very heavy. Um, let's just say without giving away too much of the plot or any spoilers, that the film tells the very true story of how Blessed Saint Alexios, then the Metropolitan of Moscow, heals the mother of the Khan of the Tartar Horde from her blindness in medieval Russia. Um, but not after facing an incredible ordeal and uh, purification through trial and suffering. If I say anything more than that, I'll pretty much be giving away the whole entire plot, but let's just say this is an excellent, excellent movie, despite having parts that are honestly quite hard to watch, and certainly one comes away from it with a true sense of the trials endured by the Venerable Saint and Wonder Worker. I would actually not recommend this film to children or to viewers that are particularly sensitive to scenes of violence and even nudity within a historically accurate and fully justified context, but I would certainly consider it to be an excellent film, well within the category of orthodox Christian movies, and um, definitely a bonus since it's based on true events and is very historically accurate. Film number four, The Monk and the Demon. Another Russian film on the list. This film, though, uh, definitely sets itself apart from the rest of this list in the sense that it is a comedy film, albeit one in which the gravitas of the message in which it portrays is in no way compromised by the humor. The story takes place in the first half of the 19th century in a monastery where um, there is a new resident, Ivan. But um, along with this um, monk, or should I say novice, um, follows with him dark forces that penetrate the monastery, uh, which materialize in the person of Legion as he introduces himself to Ivan. Uh, now this Legion chose Ivan as the object of his diabolical work and torment, uh, tempting him in every possible way in order to knock him off of his chosen way of serving God. But the stronger the temptation, the stronger the spiritual strength of Ivan. And um, yeah, albeit being a comedy for the most part, it actually explores some very dark areas, although definitely being a must-watch for the whole family, as the message certainly prevails towards the end of the film, and um, certainly serves to edify. Film number three, The Island. Basically, all ortho bros will have uh, heard of and probably seen this movie, but if you haven't, uh, let's just say during World War II, the uh, sailor by the name of Anatoly and his captain Tichon are captured by Germans. Uh, the Germans board their barge and uh, tugboat, which is carrying a shipment of coal, and uh, the German officers leading the raid offer Anatoly who's terrified of dying, the choice to either be shot or to shoot uh, his captain Tichon and stay alive. 
in which Anatoly takes that offer. Um, he shoots Tikhon, who falls overboard, and um, subsequently the Germans blow up the ship, but Anatoly survives and is found by Russian Orthodox monks when he washes up on the shore the next morning. He survives and becomes a stoker at the monastery, but is perpetually overcome with guilt and uh, haunted by these events for the rest of his life. Uh, Thirty years pass and Anatoly now has the gifts of prophecy and healing, but the other monks don't really understand him. Um, people come to see Anatoly from all across the USSR and uh, their territories for cures, healing and guidance, but even Currently, he remains in a perpetual state of grief and repentance and often gets in a boat and goes to an uninhabited island, of which the film takes its title from, where he prays the Jesus prayer and begs for mercy and forgiveness and prays for the soul of Tijuan. Uh, the film heavily explores the orthodox concept of the fool for Christ and is definitely a must-see for anyone even vaguely uh, interested in the faith, and especially for anybody discerning monasticism in any shape or form. Film number two, The Priest. Now, The Priest is another absolutely heart-wrenching film taking place in uh, Soviet Russia under the yoke of the Bolsheviks during the Nazi occupation of parts of the USSR. So, the film's main protagonist, uh, Father Alexander, uh, carries out the duties of his ministry while helped by his wife, despite the closures of all the churches under the Bolshevik regime and the Soviet authorities. Um, two days later, the Nazi invaders enter the village. The Nazi invaders are keen to actually reopen the Orthodox churches closed by the Soviet authorities, in which uh, Father Alexander is offered a position as parish priest in um, a small oblast. And um, the Orthodox church building in the village is, that was actually previously confiscated by Soviet authorities and turned into a hall for uh, the showing of films and the like is restored to its former use. Uh, the church bell rescued from the lake and um, etc. However, life under the Nazis is, of course, uh, morally ambiguous, and the priest must walk a metaphorical tightrope between uh, faithful Christian service and loyalty to his country and to his people. This film, like many on the list, explores the moral dilemma that many faithful face in trying times while trying to continue a Christian life and not compromise one's integrity, walking the thin line between patriotism and rejection of state-imposed atheism. Definitely a brilliant, brilliant film that I recommend everybody watch. Film number one, Man of God. I'm sure that uh, many have probably already seen this film, but let's just say it is a recently produced film, produced by Serbian filmmaker Jelena Popovic, um, featuring Greek actors and, believe it or not, Mickey Rourke. Uh, the film follows the life and the times and the relentless persecution of blessed Saint Nectarios of Argina. Saint Nectarios is exiled unjustly from the Patriarchate of Alexandria. He is convicted without trial, slandered without cause, at every possible opportunity. And um, the film basically depicts the trials and the tribulations of blessed Saint Nectarios as he bears the unjust hatred of his enemies while preaching the word of God and maintaining his grace. It's definitely a film for the whole family that gives us an astounding example of the Christian life and how we should behave under the circumstances of unfair and unjust and extreme persecution. So it's very, very different from any of the Protestant films that I briefly spoke about in the beginning of this video that uh, often talk about receiving worldly rewards for our faith. This film, on the other hand, completely embodies um, orthodoxy and the struggle of faith and worldly suffering of a true servant of God that we can surely only really aspire to in the slightest. Hence it being uh, number one on this list, not only for its excellent casting, directing, acting, and um, just generally being an excellent film, um, certainly everybody 
um, that is even remotely interested in the Orthodox faith whatsoever should give this film a watch, I would recommend. So, that pretty much concludes my list. Uh, some honorable mentions, uh, which for the sake of time I will not do synopses of, include the Russian films Tsar, Chuda, or Miracle, um, and the wonderful animated children's film Serafim, and another short film called The Wine Grower. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I also hope that you enjoy at least one of these excellent, excellent Orthodox Christian films, um, even remotely as much as I did. And um, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the bell, and all of the other things that YouTubers uh, incessantly tell you to do. And uh, until next time, Boga Pomagao, God bless, and Duke of Johannesburg, out.